أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ربي شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي سبحانك لا عنما لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم الحمد لله Praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek his help. We praise him and ask him for forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all evil in our soul and from all wrong actions. Whoever Allah misguides, no one can guide. I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one having no partner. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and give him peace with his family and companion. Verily, the best speech is the, is the, is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Past few months, we have been doing studies little bit on faith or the tenets of faith in Islam and alhamdulillah we have just completed our maghrib prayer as jama'ah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this congregation that we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a class solely for him inshallah brothers in Islam faith in Allah by knowing him is what we have covered and understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a knowledge that can mold and adapt where a mu'min portray himself in salah is important. Coming back, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where else does, that is the one um, arkanul iman that we, are discuss, we have discussed last few months. And uh, today, Insha'Allah, we will touch on a subject derived from the famous hadith that was mentioned uh, a few months ago, I would say, because this, this kuliah is set for once a month, and that would be the end week of the month. And I have set for about three times, and we have spoken about tenets of faith or arkanul iman. And we have discussed up till angels. And today, giving the title of the wisdom behind believing in angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I mentioned, this whole episode of uh, explaining or understanding about Arkanul Islam or Ar Arkanul Islam and Arkanul Iman or what is known as Rukun Islam and Rukun Iman. This comes in from a hadith that was mentioned and I'm going to repeat that again whereby it is a famous hadith that is narrated by Sahaba. Apparently, Sahaba gathered with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then suddenly came a man. This man dressed in white where else at that spur moment there were dust from the desert and so forth. It was not seen on him. And he came by, included himself in the jama'ah, in the congregation of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, together with a few other companions. And then he came by and he asked Prophet Muhammad Wasallam three important questions. The question is, Ma huwa al-Islam? Ma huwa al-Iman, ma huwa al-Ihsan. As in, what is Islam? What is Iman? And what is Ihsan? This question was asked in front of the companion of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
And later on, Prophet Muhammad SAW explained, or he asked Sayyidina Umar, who was narrated, he was who was one of the narrators of the hadith, he asked Sayyidina Umar, he asked, did you know who was that just now? And then Prophet, uh, and then Sayyidina Umar being, or showing his adab, he poured that question back to Prophet Muhammad SAW, telling him, Allah and his Prophet knows best. Even he wants to know or he can guess, he can guess it. But the adab of companions, when Prophet Muhammad SAW asked, they did not guessed as in he can well he can put any wild guess on it but he did not do that he says Allah and Prophet Muhammad SAW knows best so the question was did you know who was that Ya Umar he says yes Ya Umar Ya Umar did you know who was that because that man who asked the question went off he said that was Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam he came and asked so that everybody will learn. Well, the common sense would be he is an angel. An angel meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we would know a bit more on angels inshallah in a few minutes. But to answer, to, to give that question which is not supposedly to be from him because he knows best what is Islam, what is Iman, and what is Ihsan? But the purpose of him, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, come in as a human to be with that group of companion asking that question is a mere understanding for everybody that was present on that day to understand that that important question comes in from Jibreel so that everybody can make use of it. This particular hadith, which is a famous hadith that, is a, that supposedly answer to Arkanul Islam, Arkanul Iman, and what is the meaning of Ihsan? As in what we know today as Rukun Islam, Lima Perkara, or Arkanul Islam, Khamsatul Asya, and Arkanul Iman, Sitatul Asya, all these are taken off from this famous hadith that is mentioned just now and it is known as Hadith Jibril. Hadith Jibril is written in books explaining about what is the meaning of that hadith because what can be derived out there from out there subhanallah it's a long conversation that would not finish because every single thing that we are doing today are based on this arkan or based on this five condition, fundamental tenets of Islam. What we are doing today, shahada, uh, salah, the five times prayer, uh, psalm, which is the fasting in the month of Ramadan, zakah, and hajj, it comes from this hadith. And then, arkanul iman, that we are currently conducting, which is believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing in the prophets of Islam and then believing in the angels we are coming into this inshallah so without further ado because we have a lot to talk about in the understanding of angels I would like to talk about the famous hadith just now that I mentioned just now how important it is and how it was taken out of what we are or uh, or I would say uh, it was taken or derived out from where we are going to deal with angels as a part of tenant, of part of fundamental of believing. Subhanallah. Islam, you have tenant of faith. Meaning to say, all those five things are obligated to every, every Muslim who counted himself as believing in Allah and believing in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and what has been foretold by him, then you have to do these five things, which is shahada, and then salah, and then saum Ramadan, and so forth. If you are not doing this, that means you are not doing what Islam has 
condition upon you. Because to name yourself a Muslim, you have to testify that there is no other worthy of worship except for Allah and Muhammad is his messenger and so forth. Likewise, when we are dealing with Arkanul Iman or Rukun Iman, you have to believe in Allah. You have to believe in the angels. And today, believing in angels or Malaika, what is Malaika? Who are these people? Why do we have to believe in it? Or if I don't believe in it, what am I accounted for? Like what Arkanul Islam is, Arkanul Iman has also set the condition of a Muslim. If you believe in Allah and you do not believe in His angels, then you are not a Muslim that is told or foretold by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in the hadith that is known as the hadith Jibril. Ulama today gathered the information and make it as a tenant, as a condition. Has to be understood, has to be performed. Five arkan al-Islam, six tenants of faith, the five is about doing. The six is about believing. It's about the heart. Because you believe in Islam, you believe in Allah. If you don't believe in Islam, you don't believe in Allah. If you don't believe in Islam, you don't believe in the messenger of Allah. You don't believe in the angels of Allah and so forth. We are dealing with the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today. Scholars divide the belief into six categories as I mentioned just now which is belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, belief in angels, belief in books of Allah, belief in the messenger of Allah, belief in the last day. And the last one is to believe in the divine destiny, which is qada and qadar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we will have time to proceed on from one to another. If the subject of angel is not suffice today, it will be continued the next month at the end of the week, which is August. After all, inshallah, we will do today the understanding of angels. Bye. So, I'm given the title, The Wisdom Behind Believing in Angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have a few questions like, who are these malaika? What is the meaning of malaika? Angels. Linguistic definition, the first opinion, or there are a few opinions that I, I, I'm going to touch on, but the first opinion, which is the strongest and which is what is being used today, is the plural of malak, which is, or which means great strength. As it is understood from a very general point of view, the meaning of malaika is the strength whereby something or I would say a better uh, straightforward understanding would be the meaning of malaika is the soldier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's the soldier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angels are the soldier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have jobs which they will never be disobedient to do when Allah has ordained Malaika to prostrate and that prostration would not be changed until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed that order. Subhanallah. We as human, the difference between Malaika and human is such that humankind, you are also ordained to do salah, to do five times ibadah, which is known as our prayer, Subuh, Maghrib, Isha, Dhuhr, Asar, five prayers a day. It is ordained upon you, it is wajib upon you to do, but there are still Muslims that, is, that prefer or choose not to do their salah. They have a choice to do. For Malaika, they are created especially for it. 
If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He created a malaika from nur, from light. I will explain later on. When He created one, or He created, there is this place called Baitul Mal. Sorry, there is a place called Baitul Ma'mur. Darul Ma'mur, we have a place where uh, Sidratul Muntaha is, or the last heaven. And we understood it as Baitul Ma'mur, a place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created malaika 70,000 that would be coming in and out. Every day there would be 70,000 that comes in and out. And this is experienced and witnessed by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa during Isra wal Mi'raj where he saw and he understood that there will be 70,000 Malaika that is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes in and out of that place. Despite that, there are thousands of malaika, numerous than the number which is not known and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And every single malaika has got its own uh, platoon, has got its own workers, has got its own people, which is malaika, which is the type of 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 uh, of creation that Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala created from light so the second opinion it is from uh, al aluka which means that the angels that carry out the message of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala that means angels that create that was created to earn uh, to to understand the message of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala and to do and to uh, to execute whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them to do. Some scholars say it is from Al-Malik, which is owner, the owner. The technical definition, angels are created from lights and they carry out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. That is the main understanding of what types of creation that Allah created upon uh, angels. So a common misconception about angels, they are creatures of light that have no physical attributes. Sometimes when we learn uh, Aqidah probably, we understand that angels has got no um, sexual, sexual orientation, neither male nor female. They are not created as uh, something that has futures. This is a misconcept because they have an original um, features where it is mentioned in Al-Quran in Surah uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned here Alhamdulillahi alladhi Alhamdulillahi fatir al-samawati wal-ardi ja'il al-malaikati rusulan ulil ajnihati which means all the praises and thanks be upon Allah, the only originator of the heavens and earth, who made the angels messengers with wings. We are dealing with one particular angel probably, which is Jibril alayhi salatu wasalam. Two or three or four, meaning to say the um, wings. He increases in creation what he wills, very verily Allah is able to do all things in the story of Isra wal Mi'raj Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam first encounter with Jibril alaihi salatu wasallam on the very day in Gua or uh, in the cave of Hira where Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam met uh, malaika Jibril that is known as arch angel that is known as the person or as an angel that send messages or bring messages uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as in humankind. That was the first encounter. We learn from the story on the 17th of Ramadan where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was inside a cave where he sat alone and then suddenly came a creature that is on its original features. This is Angel Jibril. 
as you know, the story would end as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam shiver. And then Sayyidatina Khadijah came by. When he came by, he ran back to his home and then he related, yani Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam related what happened to him in that cave where he met a creature which is very big. The whole of his features, the whole of his um, um, features reaches the sky and Jibril alayhi salam at its own original features was such and that made Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam shiver of course because he asked Muhammad to read remember that story Iqra. he asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam to read that creature is angel Jibril that creature is on its own original features when he met Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's why Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent shivering. He was so shocked, scared, that he ran back from the cave, back to home, where he met his wife, Sayyidatina Khadija, radiallahu anha, where she comforted her. She said, you cannot be wrong, you cannot be a person that God wants to do something bad to. Because you are a good person, you always give food or you always share your food to people, you are always doing charity, you are always being kind and so forth. I'm sure whatever you see just now is not of those which is evil. Yeah. Why he relate this and what Prophet Muhammad did, the, 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 the difference is because Prophet Muhammad just witness something which is majestic, which is too big, which is like more than a giant because it reaches the highest point of sky. That is Jibril alayhi salatu wasalam. And that's why it is mentioned here in the surah, in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described angel of death as they have hands. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ ظَالِمُونَ فِي غَمَرَاتِ الْمَوْتِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ بِسْتُوا أَيْدِيهِمْ أَخْرِجُوا أَيْدِيهِمْ Here means the hands. Let me read the translation. And if you could but see when the ظالمون يعني when the wrongdoers are in the agonies of death while the angels are stretching forth their hands saying deliver your soul this day you shall be recompensed with the torment and degradation because of what you used to utter against Allah other than the truth and you used to reject his ayah with disrespect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allocate that ayah to the disbeliever when the angel of death which is what it is known as there is a name for angel of death which is Israel Israel is a name of an angel that comes to you one day six times to look at you and to say whether or not it is ready for them to take away your soul when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained so, that would happen. But can you imagine? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as a human being. Can we be at one place six times to one person? Definitely not. You cannot even go to a place two times. But, is, but Israel here mentioned in a hadith that if he goes to visit every single each individual of you, Six times a day to confirm and reconfirm whether or not to take your soul away or not. If it is, it is written by, by Allah's will that it is your ajal that day, it is your death day that day, then He will execute that act. And why is such a way that Israel, a one angel, can do this such thing as every single we have? I, I, I estimate that there, would, there, there are. A billion point six Muslim, one point six billion of Muslims in this world today. Now, you times that by six, 
that will be the times of Israel and his soldier. Because Israel has got his own soldier, has got his own people, Malaika, that works on. And that is why it is reported that that six would happen under the influence or under the, the instruction of Israel and definitely from the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There goes with the other Malaika that has got his job to do, which is Malaika. You have uh, Mikael, which is in charge of rain, which is in, which is in charge of rizik. These are the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I will report more on that insha'Allah. And how do others view angels? I'm not going to touch much on this because this is going to touch about other religion that touches on. I'm just going to touch a bit on angels. Angels is being believed by the Christians, also by Judaism or the Jewish. The Jewish, they believe in angels also, which have an, a name which, which sounds like malaika. And the Christians, definitely, you see statues sometimes in the Catholic Church. You will see them with wings. You will see them hanging out with wings. Subhanallah, we believe that our angels, that is stated in Al-Quran as what I read just now, they have wings too. Yani Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, as mentioned in the Quran, they have wings too. And so, does the Christians with the belief that angels do have wings. I just want to relate a story which is pertaining to Christianity and one time back, there is this ulama by the name of Al-Habib Salim bin Jindan. If today you hear of a name Jindan bin Naufal, who is active in Singapore also, he is always in Indonesia. That is his grandson. So, Jindan bin Naufal bin Salim bin Ahmad. I'm talking about Salim bin Ahmad, who lives in about, uh, in, the, in the 50s in Indonesia. Uh, he's a muhaddith, a person that, that, that memorized more than, I think, four to 500,000 hadith. And he's, he has his own maktaba, he has his own um, um, library in Jakarta. I forgot, uh, Otesta, I think, something like that, the, the small village. And the, the library still exists. Well, coming back to his story, he is a known saleh, a person, alim, a person that has got wisdom whenever he speaks. He's the best speaker during that time. Al Habib. Um, Salim bin Ahmad bin Jindan is during his time when he is around and the other ulama is around also, no one dares to speak. Because when he speak, he speak with wisdom. There is this one day where he leaves his house until today exists. But not what I, that, that I'm going to relate this story about. So his place, his house he do preaching. He will do preaching in mosques and people will come to his house and so forth. But there is this one day, suddenly he order a statue of uh, Mary, statue of Mary, Mariam, or Mary being um, believed in Christian, where the statue of Mary and two angels. So he brought, he bought a, a statue of Mary and two angels. And he placed it in his house. He placed it in his house. Obviously, that invited a lot of talks. A lot of people ask him, Yeah, Habib, you are a alim, you are a Muslim. Why do you do this? You know, people would start to... He just kept quiet. He did not answer. So, every day, his neighbor, there is this pastor who will walk past. He knows that pastors. So he actually purposely do that statue, place it there because he want that pastor to answer, to question him. So that pastor walked past and, and then suddenly see, so he, he came by, he said, Habib, uh, Indonesian, they, they speak in Malay also, they speak uh, Indonesian also, he said, kenapa kamu letak ini? Ini kan Tuhan saya. 
Kenapa letak di sini? Why did you put here? This is your house. Do you believe also in Mary? Do you believe in these angels? He said, do you believe in angels? That was the beginning of the conversation. I told you, he is wise. And this is the adab that we should follow. He invited the pastor to have a good talk. And he opened up Al-Quran explaining how and what. We have a chapter called Maryam in our Quran. And he explained it to him. How does Islam see Maryam? He explained to him also about angels. And this is about the wisdom of believing in angels. When he speaks to him and he makes him understand that pastor came in apparently weekly to his house. Every week, suppose that because he's a busy man. I mean, Habib Salim is a busy man. He always go out and in also because he, he has been to all over the world. By the way, he has been to Iraq. He has been to Yemen to collect authentic hadith which is not narrated outside. He has his own um, um, library like what I mentioned, Makhtut, his handwritten library. That, that, that speaks about hadith and he is a, a, a scholar in hadith. So, by the way, that pastor came in and came in and after all, Islam. He accepted Islam, he embraced Islam by the real understanding of who is Mary in the eye of Islam and what are angels in the eyes of Islam. Ma'ashar al-Muslimin, this is how we see our ulama does the work of Islam by spreading through akhlaq, not through how it is understand as violence or, or, or harsh. This is the way where you speak to people, where you show your own akhlaq. You show your own adab to a non-believer, be it Muslim, which is who, whom are not practicing Muslim, or non-Muslim out there that wants to know or do not have the chance to know Islam the correct way. The only way that we portray Islam to the others is when we show our own best of akhlaq that emulates the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So coming back to Malaika, the ruling regarding to believe in, 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 in the angels, believing in angels is the second pillar that I mentioned of Iman. Yani arkan al iman, believe in Allah and believe in angels. A person is not a believer without this pillar. As I mentioned, the condition of iman, one of it is to believe in angel. If you forsake this, if you do not believe in this, then you are considered a non-believer because that is the pillar of iman. Likewise, when we are looking at pillars of Islam, the pillars of iman also believe in angel as the pillars. This pillar of faith comes after the belief of Allah and before believing in the book. The reason is because they are the ones that deliver the message or bring the book, bring the book to the messenger. The sequence as you can see, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then believing in angels. Baru, the third one, which is believing in in the messenger of Allah. Why? Because after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to believe in the angels. And the arch angel, which is Jibril, is the one that sent messages from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the messenger, which is the third pillars of Iman. This is the understanding, this is the wisdom behind it. If you do not believe, in the angels, how can you believe in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? How can you ever be a Muslim? Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam met Jibril, got got to know Jibril, had the explanation from Jibril, became the friend. He, they became friend. They they had an, uh, uh, a great understanding through Jibril alaihi salatu wasalam. And all the angels have met Jibril. Until today, Jibril can be thousands of years. He never die. Never die. Because Allah has created him in such a way. He will never be disobedient. 
He will never tell something which is not told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is created in such a way. <coughs> Let me read this ayah. The messengers believe in what he has been revealed to him from his Lord. As do the men of faith, each of them believe in Allah, his angels, his books, and his apostles. We make no distinction, they say, between one to another of his apostles. And they say, we hear, we obey, we seek your forgiveness. Our Lord to you is the end of all journey. This is a very famous ayah in the Quran. Type. Why is the belief of angel to be the second in the pillars of Iman? As I mentioned just now, just now this has been um, um, this has been uh, this has been chosen of of the four consensus that we believe in, which is what is believed in Al Quran, as mentioned in that uh, in that ayah just now, and in Hadith of Jibril, where I mentioned the first um, kulia, or before this also I mentioned about the four. Uh, uh, the, sorry, the three questions that Jibril asked, this has been two dalil or quotes <coughs> that has been used for the dalil of Arkanul Iman is six and one of it is to believe in the angel. So, belief in the angel as a second of pillars in, 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 in faith or of faith is from Al-Quran, from Sunnah, from Ijma Al-Ulama and from the logic of the whole understanding. The logic I just mentioned to you just now of that believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then believe in angels because without angels there won't be messengers that we understand that messages from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come in from. And then of course we believe in the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those books wouldn't be there if there is no angels that pass in messages from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so as to believe in the last day to believe in the qada and qadar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all this would be revealed by the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all this wouldn't be possible if there is no angel which is at the second category in the arkanul iman as we believe inshallah bye we move on to the evidence for the obligation to believe in the angels. That is the belief in the angels is the second pillar of Iman can be proven using by the sources of Adila or the Islamic legislation of Fiqh which I mentioned just now the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned here whoever is the enemy to Allah and his angels and apostle to Jibril and, Ma, and, Ma, and Mikhail, then surely Allah is an enemy to those who reject faith. And this is a direct understanding that those who do not believe in angels automatically, or, or, or on top of that, if you don't, not, not to say you do not believe, but you create an enmity with Jibril or Mikael, automatically you are also doing that enemy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is mentioned in that ayah just now. And as sunnah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned in that hadith, like what I, meant, like what I mentioned just now, when Prophet, uh, sorry, when Jibril alayhi salam himself asked, what is iman? And then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa answered that question, Iman is to believe in Allah, to believe in angel, to believe in his book, and so forth. That is narrated in Imam al-Bukhari and also Muslim. And then, Ijma' al-Ulama is where uh, Ibn Hazm mentioned in a consensus in the issue in his book called Maratib al-Ijtima' and so forth. Many other ulama that, uh, in fact, Imam Nawawi also mentioned in his 40 hadith, so forth. So, the mention of uh, uh, ulama in Arkanul Iman 6 and the fact of believing in angel is in the consensus of all ulama. And then the logic is to believe, like what I mentioned just now, the four phrases, oh sorry, the, the phrases that to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then to believe second, on the second stage, to believe in angels. 
time. I will stop here as in the characteristic, the characteristic of angels. I hope to continue this because it wouldn't be enough. I know I have about 10 minutes to Isha, but I need to leave earlier today. Inshallah, we will continue this next month. That's the word for the mosque, inshallah. Uh, because every month we will have this um, 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 session of explaining about Aqidah or explaining about uh, Arkan al Iman uh, at every last week of the month, inshallah. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with a great, a good understanding of the angels, and that has been in the tenant of faith in Islam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen it insha'Allah. Let us do our dua insha'Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa kalim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Rabbana anfa'na bima alamtana. Rabbi faqihna wa faqih ahlana. Rabbana la tuzir qulubana ba'da idharaytana wa hablana min ladun karahmata innaka antal wahab. Ya muqalib al-qulubi wal-absar thabbit qulubana ala dinik. Allahumma arina haqqa haqqan warzukna tiba'ah. وأرنا باطلا باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم أرنا حقا حقا وارزقنا تباه وأرنا باطلا باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. May I ask for a favor that we read al-Fatiha to my uncle who just passed away today, and I did the ghusl and and dafan today, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala forgive him, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala يرفع الدرجات حقه إن شاء الله على هذه النيات خصوصا الفاتحة نحدي إلى إبراهيم بن محمد شريف أن الله يغفر له ورحمه وآفي وأفوانه وإلى حضرة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم لك يوم الدين يا كن عبد الله يا كن استعين اهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته